Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. All right, let's do it. Growing in Grace, the podcast. Joel Brzezinski here, Mike Kapler there, and we're getting together for our weekly discussion on the grace of God and His love and mercy and all the good things um, that we have received through the Lord Jesus Christ. And we have been in a series for a few weeks now, summarizing the scriptures, taking a look at the big picture uh, and and how it all points to Jesus Christ. And, And while we're doing that, we're taking a look at some of the, what we would consider some of the key parts of Scripture, some of the key happenings and, and people in the Scriptures that, that kind of make up the big picture. Obviously, we're going to miss some things. Obviously, we're not covering we're not covering Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. We're not going through the Bible. We're just, you know, we've picked some key characters that we feel are, are part of the big, are important parts of the big picture as we as we see it, as we're trying to convey an idea to you. And so we've talked about Adam you know, for the last couple of weeks, actually, and now we're up to Abraham. My oh my, is there a lot of stuff that we could say about Abraham? And so if we don't get to everything that you think, you listening, it's okay. We're just, <laughs> we're just two guys talking here and, uh, we realize that Abraham does play such a big part in this uh, in the big Bible story, and so we're going to be uh, focusing on him this week, and we'll see uh, where we get with Abraham. Thank yeah, you, um, I, and, and I'm glad you brought out everything you just said, because I don't want you to think out there in, in, in podcast land that we're uh, considering skipping over different parts of the Scripture because they're not important. I mean, we could even get into... Uh, I've done very little study on this, but I, I've done enough to to see some great connections between Jesus and his kingdom and the kings and kingdoms of the Old Testament. That's probably one we, we won't be getting into. We will, however, be reading all of the Psalms. No, I'm just kidding. Well, we could um, get into all the begats, too. <laughs> 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 yeah, we can spend uh, a lot of time. When on. I, oh, when I I used to be a kid reading my Bible, ten chapters a day, right? That's what <laughs> that's what the discipleship book told me to do. <laughs> um, I failed at it, but I tried. I tried to read ten chapters a day, and I, I would get into Matthew and start reading all the begets, and and I'm thinking, <laughs> man, when am I going to get to some good Jesus stuff here with red letters? Because I don't understand all this. But the other thing I had to do, Joel. That the rule that they gave me in the discipleship book was that, you know, I, I read 10 chapters a day. Each day of the week had a different color. So I had a colored pencil. Ah, uh-huh. And so I had a, you know, a rainbow colored Bible by the time I was done. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. So, see, you see, reading the Bible, although I didn't realize it at the time, became a legalistic thing for me at a very young age. Sure. Not a good place to be, by the way. Yeah. No, I hear you. I mean, you know, obviously we're not against Bible reading, but when you make it a rule, I mean, there's all kinds of rules that we can make that really turn the Christian life into something that it was never meant to be. To 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 know the Word of God, to know the Bible, to read it, to to have a love for it. That's that's great, and that's wonderful. We're obviously we're not against that, uh, but sometimes things become anti. Christ, and I don't mean the Antichrist. I just means become they go against the gospel when we make rules out of certain things that God never meant for us to uh, to make rules out of. So anyway, and yeah. one rule that yeah. we that you and I don't follow is that every week we have to have a certain outline for our podcast, and we're going to stick to it because we're already four minutes into this one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, are you picking on me? No, I'm picking on us. Oh, okay, <laughs> on both of us. I'm just kidding. We spent two weeks um, on Adam, man. <laughs> well, and, and that's we the other to. point to make here is because we're not following an outline, there are things we're we're going to skip over. But the, the the ultimate goal here, again, during our summarizing the scripture series, is to try and help make some connections between things that happened in the earlier part of the scripture in the Old Testament 
versus some things that happened later on with, with Jesus and the new covenant. So uh, with Abraham, again, two guys talking. We might spend as much time in the New Testament on this guy as we are in the old. But, it, you know, you can kind of get the story of, of Abraham back in, in Genesis, uh, roughly, let's just say, starting around <clears throat> without uh, looking through everything here, somewhere around uh, chapter 21. And then you find in, in 22 the story of, of uh, Abraham and Isaac and, and the, the sacrifice that Abraham was was um, required to make with his son, giving up his only son. Um, imagine that. Um, I suppose you've got some people out there today who would say we should be willing to do that too, but that's really not the case because Abraham represented something here that is so easy to um, see the correlation between that and and the cross and the sacrifice of Christ. I'm sure maybe I'll, I'll leave some of that for, for Joel to, to dive into if, if he wants to do so. But what's interesting about Abraham uh, to me is, um, I mean, there's a lot of things interesting here about the whole story. I mean, obviously with with Abraham and Sarah being so old, the, the, the deadness of her womb, and yet having this promise from God that he was going to raise up a nation through this seed, um, this promised child. And, and you know, the, the ultimately, really, the, the will of God, as it relates to the gospel, was going to be fulfilled through this child, or at least, you know, the beginning of, of what was happening here with, with Abraham, Sarah, and Isaac. So, Paul, you know, when, when Jesus rose from the dead and he was with his disciples after the resurrection, he took them aside and began to explain the scriptures to them. And, of course, that's the Old Testament, right? He began to show them from the law and, and you know, Moses and the, the, the Psalms and the, the prophets. Um, he began to show them how it all related to him, to, to, to Jesus, to, to the Messiah, to the Savior, to salvation and, and how it applies to all of uh, how it could apply to all of mankind, this, this story, how it played out. And Jesus explained all of this. He opened it up to them. Well, Paul does this probably to a small degree. Remember the apostle Paul kind of came around later on after Jesus had died and, and had the Damascus Road experience and, and received revelation directly from the Lord about the gospel. He was taught the gospel by the Lord himself. And he began to explain some of this with Abraham and how it all played out in, in Galatians chapter 3 and chapter 4. Yeah, and uh, Paul makes a really big deal out of Abraham in Galatians 3 and 4, also in, in Romans 3. And it's it's just so amazing that if, if you would have been a Jew reading the Scriptures, if you've been from Israel reading the Scriptures, not having the New Covenant yet, and wondering what all this was about, you're reading the story of Abraham— and it's a, it's a neat story, and you know that God has made a promise to him, but you really don't know what it's all about. And so we do have the benefit of having the New Covenant epistles and, and scriptures to, to find out what all of this was about. And, you know, Abraham, the big thing that Abraham is known for is his faith. He's called the father of faith. And back in Genesis 15, God had said to him, I'm going to give you a child, and Abraham is is like, um, you have given me no offspring. There's no one in my house that's my heir. And the Lord said, look at the look at the stars. If you count them, if you're able to number them. And he said to him, so shall your descendants be. And Abraham believed in the Lord, Genesis fifteen six, and he accounted it to him for righteousness. And uh, if you don't have the knowledge of the new covenant, you might just pass that by. But Paul, like you were talking about, how he had the gospel revealed to him by Jesus Christ himself, and Paul brought this out in Romans 4. For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the Scripture say? Again, the old covenant Scriptures Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now, to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. But to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. So the gospel was declared right there in Genesis fifteen six, although they didn't really realize it at the time. It was revealed later to Paul that when Abraham believed in the Lord and he accounted it to him for righteousness, 
That's really what the gospel is. It's, it's the righteousness of God revealed, the righteousness of God given to us. And so, uh, you got something to say there? No, well, no. I, uh, what, what, what were you just reading from? Was that in Galatians 4? Uh, that was in actually in Romans 3, uh, Romans 4, okay. the beginning of Romans oh. 4. Okay, gotcha. Okay, that, that's where I, I got thrown off there. Thank yeah, you. okay. Yeah, and then Galatians 3 and 4 has a whole lot to say, too, like like what you were saying. And so I, I, I just think it's interesting that if you don't have this knowledge of the New Testament, you're going to read these things and re- not necessarily see them. But Paul did have that benefit of having it revealed to him by Jesus Christ himself. And so Galatians 4, you were talking about how in uh, how God had made this promise and Abraham, and maybe I'll pass this back to you to see where you wanted to go with this, but Abraham went to Hagar, and rather than because the promise didn't seem to be happening, and so he went with, with Hagar and had this child that wasn't the child of promise. Well, that's right, and, and you know here here is the you know the the promised child Isaac, as as we would know him. Uh, he he uh, he was the one that was to be born of Sarah, but something happened there. I, I don't know if Abraham got impatient, thought maybe he needed to do something to make it happen, took his, uh, the, the bond servant, Hagar, uh, ended up having a child Ishmael. That was not the child of promise, but the, the promise still came through Abraham and Sarah. And so um, Paul talks about this, and I, I just think it's interesting because we, we know that Abraham, he, he was around a number of years, hundreds of years before Moses and the law came into existence. So it's interesting that in, in Galatians 4.21, Paul says, tell me, and, and you got to keep in mind here, we're, we're kind of jumping into something because Paul had been laying out a case for two or three chapters here, but he, he comes to Galatians 4.21 and he says, tell me you who want to be under law, do you not listen to the law? And then he goes on to talk about this uh, scenario with Abraham and his two sons. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by the bondwoman and one by the free woman. But the son of the bondwoman was born according to the flesh, and the son by the free woman through the promise. This is symbolically or allegorically speaking, for these women are two covenants, one proceeding from Mount Sinai, bearing children who are to be slaves or in bondage. That's Hagar. And now this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and corresponds to the present Jerusalem, for she is in slavery or bondage with her children. But the Jerusalem above is free. She is our mother. And then it goes on to to quote some Old Testament scripture. But you brothers are like Isaac, the children of promise. But as at that time, he who was born according to the flesh persecuted him who was born according to the spirit. So we've got this, these two covenants, one from Mount Sinai, which brought bondage, the law, that was Hagar. And then, of course, the child of promise that came through Sarah, that was Isaac. Yes. And so uh, as we wrap up this week, we'll kind of leave it there and talk a little bit more about that next week and find out a little bit more about Abraham and and his part in this whole thing called the gospel and how it all points to Jesus. So that's next week right here on Growing in Grace. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezicki. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.